This is Jim Williams with the Hurricane City update for April 14th, 5 p.m. On the front page of Hurricane City using the drop down menus, you'll notice a page called Off Season Storms, and this gives you all the Name storms in history that happened during the off season, which hurricane season ends on November 30th and then picks up again on June 1st. So during all the off season months, there have been quite a few systems. And using the April uh, diagrams here, there's only been a couple of name storms in April. Back in 1992, the first storm of the season uh, developed well northeast of the northern Leeward Islands as a subtropical storm and quickly diminished and only lasted a day or two. And then uh, in 2003, that was the last time we had an April named storm, we had Anna formed uh, right near Bermuda here as a subtropical storm, and then it moved off to the east and became a purely tropical storm, and it got winds up to around 60 miles per hour, but moved harmlessly out into the open Atlantic. It did not affect anybody. Uh, nothing is expected to develop right now. The wind shear is high out in the Atlantic Basin, and we do not expect any named storms. But if one were to form, it would be named Alex. That is the first named storm of the 2010 Atlantic hurricane season. All right, now here is the uh, Dr. Gray forecast for the April 7th forecast of this, this year, and he does this in April, and then he does another forecast in May, and this is Phil Klotzbach and Dr. William Gray. I've been doing these forecasts for years, and the reason I'm showing you this list here is this is a very interesting uh, uh, list, and the reason I say that, not only because it's they're expecting an active hurricane season going into this year, but this is very similar to the forecast they put out in May uh, and May 31st for the 2005 hurricane season and that was the year that we ended up with 28 named storms, uh, 5 major hurricanes, uh, 4 category 5's, I mean it was just an amazing in fact I think there were more than 5 major hurricanes that year but it, at that time uh, in uh, May and, th and this is the April forecast you're looking at by the way but in May of that year in 2005 they were calling for 15 named storms, they were calling for 75 named storm days, they were calling for 8 hurricanes, and they were calling for 45 intense uh, or hurricane days when there's actually a hurricane out in the open Atlantic. This year so far they're calling for 35. Uh, they were calling for 4 intense hurricanes. We are calling for 4 intense right, uh, right now. Uh, they intense hurricane days. They called for 11 back in 2005. Right now they're calling for 10. And the ACE, uh, which is the accumulated cyclone energy, uh, which they called it the net tropical cyclone activity back in 2005, was 170. And uh, so far they're calling for 160 this year. Uh, so this is pretty interesting considering it's the April forecast that they're very similar to the way they, way they were thinking in May going into June 1st of the 2005 Atlantic hurricane season. So I can only imagine what the numbers, if these numbers trend upwards going into May, the May 31st forecast they put out, uh, then we could conceivably see a very active hurricane season similar to 2005. So I'm anxiously awaiting those May numbers from Dr. Gray and Phil Klotzbach. But all these numbers indicate it's very similar to 2005. So this is something we're going to have to keep a close eye on. Uh, to see what they release in May. Now, the reason I'm showing you this map here is this is my own personal map that I reference for landfalling hurricanes during active hurricane seasons. Now, if you use the scale over here and use the 12 to 13 named storm seasons, you'll see that there's areas that are very prone to being hit when there's very active hurricane seasons. That's the southern Yucatan Peninsula, the northeastern coast of Honduras, and the Mississippi-Alabama border up in here, the central northeastern Bahama Island chain up here near Norfolk and uh, the Virginia area and Cape Cod. These are all areas that get affected when there's really active hurricane seasons. And for actually, there's a little sliver right here from uh, just south of Jacksonville, but that's from systems that cross from the Gulf over to the Atlantic side. But these are the areas that we need to watch going into this hurricane season if it's going to be very active. And I don't publish this map um, publicly because it's for my own personal reference, but I thought I'd show it to you that during this update just to let you know uh, what areas are vulnerable in the active hurricane seasons. Now, I'm going to produce my season city picks, which I produce on June 1st of each hurricane season for the hurricane season kickoff show. 
and I'll show people what cities and areas I feel are going to be at high risk going into this hurricane season. Now, just because these areas are at high risk doesn't mean they're going to be at the top of my list. You'll have to tune in on June 1st for that. Now, I wanted to mention that we have the Weather in the Media show coming up here on May 1st. That's about two weeks away, and my special guest is going to be Paul Yeager from the book Weather Wise. And Paul uh, created this book because there's a lot of old wives' tales and things like that 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 are circulated in the weather business, like uh, thick halo around the moon, heavy rain very soon, do cows lie down when heavy rain is on the way, is Seattle the rainiest city in the United States? We're going to get to the bottom of all these wives' tales with Paul Yeager on May 1st. So you want to tune in for that show uh, at 8 p.m. on May 1st at the Weather Audio Broadcast Network. That's our um, regular annual shows, the weather and the media shows, that take place once every three months at Hurricane City. And, of course, during the hurricane season, we cover hurricanes and everything else. But this book, Weather Wise, you want want to check this out. It's on store shelves now in all the bookstores. Why uh, the facts, myths, and oddities of the weather and why things happen, like why does hail get so large and all these kinds of things. Really looking forward to this interview on May 1st, and you want to tune in for that, so mark your calendar. Well, that's it for now. We'll be back with another update in a couple of uh, days, uh, maybe in about a week from now, and uh, to re-update you on the Weather in the Media show coming up for May 1st. That's it for now. Thank you again for visiting Hurricane City.